Good morning. morning. Happy New Year. Today is the first Sunday of the liturgical year, and so we get to say Happy New Year a couple of times in the space of just a couple of weeks, and what a joy that is. My name is Pam Smith, and I'm the pastor here at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland, Florida. And I'm so grateful for each one of you who are physically present worshiping with us today, and also for those who are joining us through the wonders of the internet. What a joy that it is. So when you walked in, you saw that some things looked a little bit different, right? Many, many hands may light the work yesterday morning as decorations and so forth were put up, and we, we enjoy these weeks when we can enjoy these. And so we are grateful to each who participated in that. Over Advent, these coming um, four Sundays, including today, um, our theme is Watch, Wait, Wonder, and Worship. You can see a progression there. Watch, Wait, Wonder, and Worship. And so I would invite you to um, kind of meditate a bit on those words and so forth as we go forward. Now, a lot of people have various um, practices during Advent, and so I wanted to um, show you a couple of things. Um, We have made a a daily calendar with a word of the day and a Bible verse of the day. These are available for you to pick up in um, in the narthex on the desk, and they're also available at the website online. Along with that is this little card that is um, a devotional order that you can follow as you go through perhaps the words of the day or some other devotional device that you may have. So these are available for you online and hard copy on the desk um, in the narthex. Also, I just saw this come out. I've got a lot of uh, material here that I'm juggling today, which is a good thing. So I don't know that you can see this, but the picture on this is simply stunning. It is um, the picture of, just a second. It is the painting titled Hope by a Palestinian artist. And what we have in this material, this is a devotional with a prayer for every day during Advent. This has been assembled by the leaders of the Lutheran Church in Canada and the ELCA, and the Episcopal Church in the United States and in Canada. And so it starts each Sunday is a prayer by one of the leaders. The first one for today, actually, is Bishop Michael Curry of the Episcopal Church. And so he has a prayer there, and then a shorter one that prays specifically for individuals and congregations in Jordan, Palestine, and the Holy Land. So this, uh, Marty, has a link gone up on this yet? Not yet. yet. A link will be available on the website um, for you. And also, if you would, I I printed this one out. Anybody who wants it is welcome to have it. But during this season of Advent, I do invite you to, um, to live into the Advent season rather than just simply wait for Christmas to come. Now you'll see in our order of worship today that we have some changes. And we have some, we've got a lot of music in there. Um, In fact, it has been said, as Barb told us last time, I think, um, she who sings prays twice, didn't you include that? Yep. And so we're going to be doing a lot of singing and praying. Now one of the things that I'd like you to notice in your worship folder is we have um, a little uh, one verse as we light the Advent calendar. That music is a Jewish folk song, a Yiddish folk song, actually, the melody for that. Then today, the Kyrie is one that is familiar to us. It is from the Eastern Orthodox Church, and it's one that we sang immediately following the invasion of Ukraine. And we sang that for many times. It draws from that heritage. And we're adding something new on page 13 in your worship folder. We have um, a, a little... Um, sung offering before the exchange of peace. And that, that line is actually Palestinian. So what we're doing is we're drawing upon the musical traditions of um, many in that immediate area and thereby offering our prayer for peace. 
So today, also, in addition to being the first Sunday of Advent, is um, our Commitment Sunday for Alive in the Spirit, our annual stewardship campaign. And you will hear more about that later in the service. We have a lot of things coming up. Um, you'll notice on the announcement sheet, and there are several today. Um, so first of all, Deb is gonna come up um, and talk to us for a minute about about peace. Here you go. You're welcome. I'm not used to holding my, oh, there we go. That's good. Um, as many of you know, as many of you know, um, our church, our congregation is a part of a greater mission within Polk County. And we are a part of peace. And PEACE stands for Polk Ecumenical Action Council for Empowerment. We decided to join PEACE, I guess, last year. Yep. And so um, we've held several meetings and we have several network members that signed up. But I just wanted to give you just a real quick, quick brief um, understanding of PEACE. PEACE is a vehicle for congregations to build justice ministries to work together with diverse congregations to identify root causes of community problems and to take action together. And this is what we're doing. We are doing justice. And this comes from Micah. Mm -hmm. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God? And our congregation meets 52 times a year, so we do a good job of reminding us to be faithful. Our congregation also does a good job of showing mercy and as mm -hmm. evidenced in our fellowship hall with the, the tables and tables of goods that we collect. Unfortunately, our congregation does not do justice very well. Biblically, justice means to hold the kings and nobles accountable for fair treatment of all people, especially the poor, widow, and the orphan, or the most vulnerable in our communities. In our time, that means holding the county officials, school superintendents, et cetera, accountable for those people in need, those vulnerable people. So we got together uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, some of our um, network members. Who all was there when we gathered together in Winter Haven? And Dan. And Dan was there. A couple yeah. of people. And Brenda was there, yep. And we voted, there were like massive Many attendance for many churches and we voted on three topics that we thought that we would like to explore and find out if we could really make a difference one was mental health the other one was elder care and the final one was education and the consensus was elder care so that is what this is what we are going to do for this year to try and impact elder care within our community within Polk County. So tomorrow night, we are going to be uh, meeting. Uh, it's our first research kickoff, and everyone is invited. And I have to use my phone, I'm sorry. Can I help you hold anything? There you go. Okay. So our research kickoff is tomorrow evening at the Resurrection Catholic Church. That's 333 Terrace Way in Lakeland. And anyone Everyone is invited to join us. If you need a ride, let us know. Mm -hmm. But we're going to begin our research on elder care and what we're going to tackle within elder care. And I guess the first thing I think of is transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure if that's the way we're going to go, but I just wanted to let you know that our uh, congregation, our church, is definitely participating and making a difference within the community. Mm -hmm. Right. Did you have a question? I bet you do, Mary. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thanks, Mary. Okay. Thank you all. 6.30 tomorrow night. Thanks. 6.30. Okay, Judy. There's a live in the spirit in this congregation. You're welcome. Good morning. I'm Judy Washburn. If I haven't met you yet, and it's my privilege to lead the church safety team. I would like to invite you next Sunday after the service to join us for cookies and a lighthearted look at ushering. We may need some extra help with that during the holidays. We also as a safety team have been uh, 
putting in some additional supplies and we can talk about that and where they are. And I'll also be available to get our uh, church safety guide to you if you haven't received that yet. So see you next Sunday. Terrific. Tremendous work has been done in this area over this last year, thanks to Judy's leadership. We are very grateful for that. I'd like you to think back um, about um, a month and a half, maybe a month, maybe five weeks, and during our worship service for Reformation, we had a brass band. We had a number of brass players that joined in, and we could, oh wait, I don't need to use this, do I? Um, and <laughs> there's a lot of moving parts today, friends. Um, and so because that music so invigorates our worship time together, we want to be able to offer that at other special services like Christmas Eve and Easter. So in your worship folder, there's a half sheet that says that you can contribute to the sights and sounds of the season. And um, included in that, of course, if you would like to um, buy a poinsettia, we'll have anything besides poinsettias, or is it just poinsettias? Just poinsettias, just poinsettias. Um, during our Christmas Eve service. But anything additional that you would like to do will go into the fund by which we can pay musicians, get additional choir music, maybe get some other decorations for our worship space. So if you'll fill that out, that would be just terrific. Um, June, am I right that Saints Alive is not tomorrow, but the next Monday? Right. Always, the second Monday. Always the second Monday. So if you would like to come and have a potluck lunch, please bring a dish to share as you are able and meet some people. A lot of people from outside of our congregation come. Um, it's a good chance to get to know people and have some friend, friendly conversation. Noon, a week from Monday. Um, you'll notice on your calendars that um, things are a little bit peculiar this year because Advent 4, the fourth Sunday of Advent, is December 24th, which is Christmas Eve. So this, our schedule is going to be the same on Sunday morning because we'll have Advent 4 Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And our Christmas Eve candlelight service will be that same day, yep, that same day at 5.30. 5.30, candlelight service, and then Christmas Day service is on the 25th of December, how about that, at 10 o'clock. Um, we'll probably have lessons and carols, something like that. Um, also mark your calendars for Tuesday, December 19th. Tuesday, December 19th at 4 o'clock. For those of you who may not enjoy the hustle and bustle of the season, we're going to have a worship service that is just a little bit quieter. A time maybe to just enjoy the, the season of Advent. A time to reflect and pray um, without jingle bells in the background. So please plan on joining us 4 o'clock on Tuesday the 19th. Also on Advent 4, we are going to be receiving new members into the congregation, either as regular members or as associate members. And so if that is something that you would like to have more information about, I would, I would love the opportunity to talk with you about that. So just let me know. Um, a couple of um, matters of family business. Last week I announced um, the health concerns uh, regarding Steve Solovitz. Pastor Carroll's husband. Um, he continues to be in the hospital. Um, we understand that he suffered a stroke um, and the family, um, their sons and children have come in from other places to be with Pastor Carroll during this time. And so we remember her and Steve and their family in our prayers and I encourage you to do so through the week. Please do not go up to the hospital to visit. Please do not call. Texts are good, that's probably the best way. And I also noticed that Pastor Carol is on Facebook, so you could also message her that way. Now, um, two other announcements. Um, in the narthex, and let's see, on the, de on the side over there by the bulletin board, you'll see some little cards like this. 
and you have an opportunity to complete one of these with a Christmas greeting or a holiday greeting that you may have for this community of faith. You can write your greeting, sign your name, and put it, pin it up on the bulletin board, and we'll see the bulletin board fill up over these coming weeks. Finally, this afternoon at 2.30 at Heritage Baptist Church on South Pipkin Creek Road in Lakeland, on South Lakeland, the Lakeland Choral Society is going to be doing a concert, and Pat Blanchett sings in that, as does Mary. And so you're welcome to come out and join in, um, enjoying some of the music of the season. Whew. <laughs> Alive in the spirit, there is a lot. I'm going to ask, I pray not, have I forgotten anything? Whew. We made it, we made it. So then I would invite you, as we embark upon this season of Advent, to watch and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Did I do, yes, wait a minute, wait a minute, did I do that wrong? Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah. Um, in your worship folder, one of the traditions that we have is that we light the Advent wreath, um, Advent candles, um, as we mark down the Sundays of Advent. And so my prayer is missing. My prayer is missing. It was in here this morning. Okay, we'll try it in this book. Oh, you guys, thank you for your patience. <laughs> so what we're going to do, we're going to light this one, the first candle. And would you please pray with me? We praise you, O oh God, for this wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's coming. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep that we may watch and be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts as we watch with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord whose coming is certain, and whose day draws near. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us sing the first verse.
Would you please stand? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the 64th chapter. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those gladly, do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord... You are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember our iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. We sing Psalm 80 in unison. A reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. 
For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Would you please stand for the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands that the doorkeeper be kept on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, Keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So you're going to hear me say this a number of times in the coming weeks. Our Advent theme this year is watch, wait, wonder, and worship. And in these days, we move along that continuum. Can you see the continuum there? We move from one to the next. I was reminded a bit ago about a young boy um, whose mother had a butterfly garden. And he went out and he saw all the caterpillars out doing their little thing. And then he saw that the butterfly came. And in between that stage, there was the time when the larva was in the cocoon, right? And he saw that. And he saw, as he looked through that very sheer cocoon, he could see the, leave, or the leaves, huh, the wings of the butterfly. And you could see the butterfly trying to get out. And he said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to help. And so he opened up the cocoon, and the butterfly came out and died because it needed that time of preparation. And so it is that I invite you in this season of Advent to not leapfrog to Christmas, 
but instead experience these days. These days that are getting shorter, the darkness that comes a little earlier. Many of us decry that. I'm not crazy about it, but you know what? I found that that dusk hour is a wonderful time for me to light the candles on my Advent wreath at home. Maybe to light some other candles and to enjoy that soft and velvety kind of darkness where if we sit in the stillness, we can feel the spirit so very close. We may be eager for the outpouring of joy at Christmas, and we are, but let's not leapfrog too far ahead. And so it is today that we watch. Now, watching can seem like something very passive, like what we do on a Sunday afternoon on the couch (laughs) instead of being out on the field. But watching is not passive. When Earl and I married a few years ago, um, he was part of a crew on a sailboat, on a 30-foot tartan single keel. I think I got that all right. And so we would go out every weekend sailing. And Earl had a job on the crew. My job was to stay out of the way. (laughs) Now, um, there were races every weekend. And so the race would go from a starting point. It would go out, and then they would turn. I think they call that tack, but I'm not sure. And they'd go to another marker, and then they would turn, and then they would head back into harbor. Well, these markers for the the spot to turn were like bobbing on the water. They were not tall, they were small. Earl was gifted with extraordinarily good eyesight. And so his job, (laughs) amongst others, was to be out at the front of the boat. I don't even know what that's called, others may. And he would be looking, he would be looking, and he would look and he'd see some little tiny thing, and he'd say, Pam, come and see. I was like, "Um, I see nothing. But he did, and he could then direct the captain how to get most quickly and directly to that point to make the turn. His job of watching was very active, and that's what I invite you into during this time of Advent. Watching. Watching for what, Pastor? Well, watching for the inbreaking of the kingdom of heaven. It is coming among us, even now. Even now. So, yesterday afternoon, um, members of your council met as part of our annual stewardship appeal. And we had some wonderful conversation. One of the questions that I asked the members present was, think of a time, a meaningful time, a significant time that you have experienced here at Grace. And I want you to think about that now too. And those of you that were here yesterday, think of another time. I'd like you to think of that time. Think of where you were, Who else was present? What were you doing? Were there decorations or sounds that you experienced? I'd like you to kind of, in your mind's eye, get into that place just for a moment and feel the feels that you had at that time. Joy, perhaps, contentment, maybe peace or settledness. Or maybe it was a time of pain and somebody came alongside you and so you felt their comfort. I'd like you to lock that into your brain Often I might say, and now I'd like you to turn to somebody next to you and share that, but we're not going to do that here today. Instead, I would like you to do that during fellowship hour afterwards. Get that time in your mind. 
The next thing that I asked yesterday was, do you have a dream for this congregation? A dream for this community of faith? Is there an image in your mind that makes you go, oh, maybe? Is there a project that you would like to see started? Is there a group of people that you would like to touch? Is there an idea that just might spawn from a kernel into something big? Is there a dream? Not is there, what is your dream for this congregation? I'd like you to get that in your mind. And I'm gonna ask you to share that with somebody during fellowship hour. And I would love to hear your responses to both of those. You can send me an email. That would just delight me no end. Because you see, in this time of Advent, this is a time of watching, watching for what God might have for us to do in the future, watching for what God has done in our life in the present and in the past, a time of watching. Because during Advent, as we have been singing and praying today, we are aware that the King is coming. The Kingdom of Heaven indeed is at hand. Jesus said that in the Gospels. The Kingdom of Heaven is at hand. There's that inbreaking of the presence of Christ. So God with all of that godly divinity, all of that is squished into that body of that little baby who squawked and burped and cried. All of that was in there, into that baby's body. And that baby grew into a man who loved and lived and touched and healed and taught and then was died and died and was resurrected and ascended into heaven leaving us here that we can be bearers of the kingdom to this world that needs it so and we are privileged aren't we to participate into that coming of the kingdom every day among us. And in that way, my friends, we, each of us here, and we collectively are alive in the spirit. Amen. Would you please stand as we sing?
Good morning, I'm Naomi Thompson, and if you haven't met me before, I am the current president of our Congregational Council. And first of all, I wanna give you all a big thank you. We hadn't had a stewardship campaign in this congregation since 2019, and last year we embarked on our Stewardship for All Seasons program, and our theme was the Heart of Grace, and we set a goal and it was a stretch goal mm -hmm. but you know what you were so generous that your pledges and offerings exceeded that goal and for that we are truly truly grateful and i applaud all of you for doing that so with that we were able to have a balanced budget last year which is the first in a long time <laughs> and over the course of this year so far, we've been in the black. We have had no issues. We haven't had to touch our reserve funds because of these contributions that have continued to come in. So thank you again. Um, last year, we had matching funds. We had a $20,000 matching fund from a very generous donor. And this year, we don't have that. But you know what? You're alive in the spirit. And I am fully confident that as a congregation, we can meet our goal this year of increasing our offering by an additional $900 per week. Our theme this year under Alive in the Spirit has three sub-themes, welcome, nurture, and praise. Pastor Pam talked about dreams, and our council actually has quite a long action list <laughs> of things to be done and we can't get that all done right away, so we're kind of prioritizing them A, B, and C. But some of these, and quite a few of them actually fall under these headings. For example, for welcome, we have looked into getting quotes for updating our signs around the congregation, including Pat, that very cumbersome <laughs> sign up front that could fall down on somebody's head while they're putting the letters up. And so we really, Put that up at the top of the list and, and are hoping that we can go through with this quote that we have to update things. Amen. <laughs> Thanks, Pat. Um, you know, a uh, couple of the other things that we've talked about um, on our action list for welcome is updating and creating a logo for a congregation. Um, maybe doing some updates to the narthex or putting some other information around like on a, a whiteboard in the fellowship hall. So some of these other things that will help people who come into the congregation know where they're going and help them to feel welcome. Uh, and the next is nurture. Um, one of the things that we've done is we've gotten a quote on a hearing assistance system for people who have hearing aids to help them, I think it's called a hearing loop, to help them to turn their hearing aids and better understand and hear what's going on. Um, other things that we've looked at are, um, and this kind of lines up with what Deb was talking about with peace, is looking at maybe getting an Uber account so that people who have a hard time getting to church might have another way to get to church. We're throwing around different ideas with that. Um, providing resources for mental health, mm -hmm. um, things like that. And then the third theme is praise. We gather every week for worship and praise. And we hope that we will be able to maybe update some of our things that we use for that praise. For example, maybe get some new banners or update some of the paraments. Um, our sacristy back there oh. needs some work. So again, we have, we have quite a few things that we're dreaming of. Um, our music programs and worship programs online, everything that, that we do here is because of your support and what you've given to the congregation so you, I know you're alive in the spirit. I see mm -hmm. that, I see that every mm -hmm. Sunday and I see that That's in the true. fellowship hall and I think you all feel that too. And I ask that you pray and that I pray that the Holy Spirit will guide you as you continue to support the ministry of Grace Lutheran Church and as you think about your commitments, a pledge of money, of, of a, you know, a plan on how you're gonna support this church, also think about uh, how you can support the church with your time and your talent mm -hmm. as well. Yes. That's as important. So with that, shall I? Yes. I don't need this. I can talk That's without right, it. <laughs> so e each of you received in the, 
I say each of you. Many of you, those of you who are on our mailing list, received in the mail um, a commitment card that looks like, like this. And so if you did bring that with you today and you're prepared to, to place that, I would invite you to come forward and do that. If you are prepared to make a commitment and don't have the card with you, please raise your hand. And Kevin, why don't you come up front with that? We have some, some others, so if you need to have one, uh, we can certainly make sure that you, you get one of those. So we're gonna take just a few minutes and I would invite you into a, a time of prayer. Please pray with me. Lord, you have blessed us with so much. You have entrusted so much to us. And we are grateful that we have this opportunity to make a commitment, to make a plan, to return to you a portion of that which you have entrusted to us. By the power of your Holy Spirit, move in our hearts and in our minds and in our beings Help us to live generously, Lord, um, because of the abundance of grace that you have poured into our lives. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, who needs a card? Okay. And so you keep your hands up. There's some more over here as well. In the back, Kevin. When you have completed it, you can bring it forward. There's a I would like to add that um, you can also complete this form by going to our website online. There is a, a fillable PDF, did I say that right? A fillable PDF that you can complete, or you can complete in hard copy and bring it by the office, either bring it by or mail it into the office. And my friends, thank you. Would you please stand? And now we confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration.
Call your church into holy fellowship as we await the restoration of all things. Re-energize your faithful people to live with hope and compassion, especially those who serve as missionaries near and far. Center us on your promise to come among us and make all things new. Merciful God, receive our prayer. All creation signals your presence, O God. The vastness of the cosmos, the turn of the seasons, and living things that both rest and flourish. Rekindle our commitment to care for the earth. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let the nations tremble at your holy presence that justice and liberation prevail in all corners of the earth. Restore peace to nations in conflict. Teach righteousness to corrupt leaders and systems and bring stability to areas facing uncertain futures. Lord, we pray particularly that there be peace in the land of Palestine, Israel, and Jordan. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Enrich the spirits of all who feel hopeless, fearful, or despairing. Stay close to those who await healing or relief, particularly Arlene, Anne, Mabel, Mike, Anna Mae, Doris, Michael, Julie, Carol, Anne, Tom, Lydia, Paul, Will, Amy, Bob, Jane, Marion, Monica, Scott, Ron, Flo, Doris, Dottie, Ruth, Marion, Tim, Betty, Henry, Mary, Greg, and Joyce, Steve, Jim, Yolanda, and Max. Deliver all who are in any need. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be with those who keep awake at night, nurses working overnight shifts, caregivers of newborns and aging adults, stargazers, those who are anxious, those who are traveling, Reveal to all that the dark can be a place of calm and comfort filled with your presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You have sent out your angels and gathered your faithful people from every time and place, calling them into one fellowship of saints. Bless the witness of those who dwell in your eternal presence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts, and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen. And now as we move to the greeting of peace, the choir will sing this first to help us learn it. peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. We share a sign of that peace with one another. You may be seated as we prepare to return to God a portion of that which God has entrusted to us.
Would you please stand as we sing? Let us pray. God of power, God of plenty, God of abundance, all things are yours. We bring to you that which you have entrusted to us. Use them so that all may be fed. Shape us into the very body of Christ and use us for the sake of the world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and grace. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. indeed holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, 
his glorious resurrection and ascension and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all of your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory now and forever in your holy church. Amen. Amen. My friends, we are bold to pray as our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, 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 hallowed hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My friends, this is the Lord's table, and it is the Lord who bids you welcome. Uh, we commune at the altar rail. As you come down the center aisle, please kneel at the rail. The bread will be offered to you first. After you receive that, the first chalice is one for intinction into which you may dip the bread. The second chalice you will be offered is for drinking. And the third chalice is the chalice of juice. Please come, my friends. All is now ready.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserve us unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. We sing the third verse of hymn 470. <laughs> The words are in the worship folder. Let us pray. O God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I would invite you now to join me in the singing of our sending hymn. I would invite you to move to the side aisles, please, as you are able. And so as we embark upon this Advent season, this season of Advent, not just pre-Christmas, but a season unto itself, I bid you as you leave this place to follow these teachings of Jesus and to love radically, forgive extravagantly, act compassionately, serve selflessly, keep watch, live simply, 
And may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.